Hi, my name is Terence and welcome to Building Blocks English. Today we're going to talk about action and state verbs. All verbs in English can be divided into two groups, action verbs and state verbs. Why is this important? Basically, state verbs cannot be used in the continuous form or ing form when it is the main verb of the sentence. What does this mean? The continuous form is the participle form or the ing form of a verb. For example, flying, running, swimming. Uh, in an example sentence, it would be, I am flying to Paris tomorrow. The no ing rule only applies if the verb is the main verb of the sentence. What does this mean? The main verb is the verb that carries the main meaning of the sentence. It is also the verb that carries the tense of the sentence. For example, I am flying to Paris tomorrow. Flying is the main verb. It belongs to the present continuous tense. I enjoy swimming at the beach. Enjoy is the main verb. This is present simple. I have been learning English for five years. Learning is the main verb. It's, this is present perfect continuous. When did you stop smoking? The main verb is stop. The tense is past simple. Let's talk about action verbs. Action verbs are sometimes called dynamic verbs. If someone performs an action and you can see it, hear it, copy it, record it, film it, or even laugh at it, then it is an action verb. Some examples include fly, jump, run, eat, smoke. And here are some example sentences. The kangaroo is jumping down the road. Or I am writing a letter to my friend. My wife snores really loudly. I run every day after work. All of these verbs are action verbs. Action verbs can be used in both the simple and continuous form. The desired tense will determine this. Now let's talk about state verbs. These are a little bit more complicated. State verbs are sometimes called stative verbs. State verbs are the opposite of action verbs. They cannot be seen. They cannot be heard. You cannot copy it. They're kind of invisible or abstract. State verbs, when it has a state meaning, must be used in the simple form. For example, the base form, not the ing or not the ed form. For example, I sleep at 11 p.m. or I wake up at 7 a.m. I have lunch at midday. Most state verbs belong to one of four groups. The first group is mental process. These are abstract or invisible actions that take place in your mind. For example, think, seem, appear. And some example sentences include, he seems quite happy today. It is incorrect to say, he is seeming quite happy today. This is wrong. Another example is, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Forgot is a state verb, this is correct, but I am sorry I was forgetting your name. This is incorrect. The second group of state verbs is opinion. These show positive or negative ideas. For example, like, love, prefer, hate. And an example sentence, I really dislike her high-pitched voice. Dislike here is our state verb. I am really disliking her high-pitched voice. This is not correct. Another example. I totally agree with what you said. Agree is a state verb. I am totally agreeing with what you said. This is incorrect. The third group of state verbs is possession. These show that something belongs to someone or somebody. 
or shows that it is necessary. For example, have, possess, own, belong. Your course book consists of 12 units. This is correct. Your course book is consisting of 12 units. This is incorrect. Another example. This box contains old toys from my childhood. This is correct. The box is containing old toys from my childhood. This is incorrect. The final group of state verbs is sense. These refer to the human senses. For example, smell, taste, feel, see, hear, sound. This is quite a small group of state verbs. For example, I think I smell smoke. Smell is a state verb and this is correct. I think I am smelling smoke. This is incorrect. Another example is, that sounds like a great idea. Sounds is correct. That is sounding like a great idea. This is incorrect. I'd like to end with some things to consider. Unfortunately, there are a lot of exceptions when we're talking about state verbs. So for example, it is common to hear state verbs used in the continuous form. This often means that they're being used with a different meaning. For example, they're being used with an action meaning or they're being used in some kind of modern progressive way. So let's consider the differences in the following sentences. I smell roses. This is a state verb. This is a state verb of sense because your brain is sensing the smell of roses. The second sentence, I am smelling roses, is correct, but it is not a state verb. This is an action verb, and it is an action verb because it is intentional. We are choosing to smell the roses, and it is not something our brain is detecting. This action can also be seen by someone, Someone can copy you, someone can film you. For example, if this was a rose, I could, beautiful, smell it. Here's another example. I see something in the fog. This is a state verb of sense. I am seeing a friend for dinner tonight. This is an action verb. This has the meaning of meeting or eating or some other action meaning. I see what you mean by that. This is a state verb too, but this is not a sense. This is actually a mental process because it has the same meaning of understand. And the last one, I am seeing a television show at the moment. Unfortunately, this one is incorrect. Why? Well, when we are talking about a television show, we should be using I am watching. Watching or to watch is the action meaning of the verb to use your eyes. Here's another example. I have an apple. State verb. Possession. I'm having an apple. An action verb, but here have means eat. I have a baby, state, possession, and I'm having a baby. Well, this could have many meanings. Uh, this could mean right now, present continuous, or it could mean in nine months. Um, alternatively, it could mean that I am pregnant. Here's another example. I think it's going to rain tomorrow. Think here is a state verb. It is a mental process because you are doing something in your mind that you can't see. You're speculating about the future. 
The second sentence, I'm thinking of going to the beach tomorrow. This is an action verb. This has this meaning of uh, strongly considering or I'm very likely to go to the beach or I have about a 70% chance of going to the beach. So this is an action verb. All right, last one. David is annoying. The be verb is typically a state verb. It doesn't fit in, in, into one of the four categories. Think of it as the mother of all state verbs. Be verb is just generally a state verb. However, David is being annoying is correct, but it is more of an exception to the rule. What does this actually mean? This actually means that David right now is being annoying, but normally he is actually quite uh, nice or friendly or gentle or not annoying. So this is referring to a very, very temporary state. Lastly, you've all heard this slogan before from the famous uh, fast food chain McDonald's. I'm loving it. Love is a state verb. It is a state verb of opinion. But, you know, almost two decades ago, McDonald's released a marketing campaign that used this groundbreaking slogan that really made McDonald's very popular after this new campaign. But you could almost consider it almost intentional. It is now acceptable to use some opinion state verbs in the continuous form, just like McDonald's did. You could almost say that McDonald's started this wave. So if we use this in a different context, let's say that we're at a party and your friend asks you, what do you think of this party? And you reply, I'm loving it. What does that mean? Basically, this emphasizes your precise feeling right now, at the moment that your friend asks you this question. Your opinion of this party can change at any moment, and your opinion of the party uh, is probably different before or after the question being asked. State verbs is an important part of foundational grammar. All basic tenses, like present simple, present continuous, future simple, future perfect continuous, action verbs and state verbs are a big part of how and when you can use these tenses. It is very, very important to think, if I use a particular verb, I do need to think if it is an action or a state verb. If it is a state verb, because it belongs to one of the four groups, mental process, opinion, possession or sense, then I know that I cannot use it in a continuous tense. It has to be a simple tense, like present simple or past simple. This is a really, really important thing to note. It might not be the same in your language, so it is very, very important that you are aware of this in English. Thank you very much for watching today. If you would like more information about this lesson, you can follow the link in the video description below where I've written up this entire lesson with examples and practice activities. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, keep on learning, and don't give up. See you soon.